The Arab slave trade started around the year 650 and ended in the 1990s, while the European slave trade started in the 1450s and ended in the 1860s. The Arab slave trade, also known as the Trans-Saharan slave trade, predominantly occurred in the Middle East, North Africa, and parts of Asia, stretching from the 7th century onwards. It continued for hundreds of years and was closely associated with the expansion of the Islamic Empire. On the other hand, the European slave trade, also known as the Transatlantic slave trade, mainly took place from the late 15th century to the 19th century. It involved the transportation of millions of African people to European colonies in the Americas, primarily in the Caribbean, North America, and South America. Slavery as a practice is an undeniable part of human history, a common experience for all people beyond the boundaries of regions. From little towns carting away humans as spoils from neighboring battles, to countries warring and enslaving the lands and people of the other side, to more strategic raiding of locations, history is tainted with stories of various versions of this dehumanizing practice. However, Arab and European slavery were two distinct historical phenomena that occurred in different regions and at different times, and they had some key differences. It is important to note that both systems involved the enslavement of individuals, but they had distinct characteristics and evolved in different contexts. This episode looks at some of the significant differences between the Arab and European slave trades. Although it is nearly impossible to accurately place an exact date to when slavery started, as forms of servitude have always existed, it is not far from reasoning to see how slavery became such a thorn in the flesh of African history. As slavery continued in regions of the world, slave raids and attacks with the aim of enslaving became more prominent. What was once a negative consequence of war and other underlying issues was fast transitioning into an economic opportunity. This inhumane practice soon evolved into a commercial activity and grew to be a legitimate business as people saw and grabbed the opportunity to make wealth at the expense of human suffering. At this point, one would question if those involved knew that legal does not automatically translate to moral but it seemed that to their business-oriented minds, the inherent cruelty of slavery and slave trade practices contributed to no moral issue for their conscience. As popularly regarded, the European slave trade was indeed one of the most horrible of such slave transactions in the world and most devastating for black Africans. However, contrary to popular assumptions, it was not the only slave trade that Africa experienced. Years of slave trade occurrences had laid the bricks, setting the stage for the horrid European slave trade. A very important yet often unnoticed cornerstone was the Arab slave trade. The Arab slave trade, also referred to as the Trans-Saharan slave trade, encompassed a long series of commercial interactions and trade, including the slave trade of black people between Sub-Saharan Africa and North Africa, headed by the Arab slave merchants. The genesis of this story of captivity started with the invasion of North Africa by the Arabs in the 7th century, when the latter took over the command of the region including its trading. Yet, this is insufficient to explain the history of the trans-Saharan trade. <music> 
Maghreb, also referred to as Central North Africa, which included modern-day countries like Morocco, and Sub-Saharan Africa, which included regions like modern-day West African countries, Nigeria, Ghana, etc., had an exchange market based on particular products. The Arabs needed the gold that could be mined in Western Sub-Saharan regions, and the Sub-Saharan regions needed the salt that was produced in North Africa. This mutual dependency kept both regions at ease and flourishing, despite the difficulties of navigating the desert between both regions until around the 10th century, when some best described as skewed mines saw the opening up of a new market with the most unthinkable currency of exchange, humans. Were the Arabs in need of products other than gold? Were the sub-Saharan residents running out of gold to trade for salt? Whatever angle it is viewed from, one thing is certain. It takes two to tango. By exchanging humans as slaves for commodities, both buyers and sellers not only dehumanized humans, but jointly affirmed the establishment of what is the longest lasting slave transaction in African history. While centuries passed by, the trans-Saharan trade continued to flourish, although not without consequences for the sub-Saharan countries. However, by the mid-15th century, the era of the infamous European slave trade came into being in a not-so-different manner. The European slave trade, also known as the transatlantic slave trade, describes a series of events involving the trading of enslaved Africans to European nationalities. Similar to the foundation of the commercial interaction between North and Sub-Saharan Africa, it is most probable that gold, amongst other mineral resources, drew the Europeans' attention to West Africa. However, the common saying, all that glitters is not gold, seems to have been manifested or, more accurately, reversed in the case of the Europeans, as they did find an unlikely gold mine in the lands of West Africa, the slave trade market. While it is true that slavery and slave trade practices existed in Africa before the Europeans landed on the continent's soil, it is also true that slave traders and slave trade practices grew with the advent of the Europeans. After all, if the demand is high, a corresponding supply is to be expected. The European slave trade is an intricate step up involving not just Europe and Africa, but the Americas as well. These interwoven details added to the high number of victims distinctly marked the transatlantic slave trade as the biggest in global slave trade history. Starting with Portuguese traders who found a passage into and captured black people from West African coasts for four long centuries, millions of Africans were enslaved, sold to, and shipped off as cargo by European slave traders from different regions. The dark and life-altering phase lasted from the 15th century to the 19th century. The transatlantic slave trade is a well-known event and one that is often discussed. However, one may question if people knew how devastating it was, not just in global slave history, but for the actual victim, Africa. How else would one describe a continent losing over 10 million of its people into slavery in a foreign land? This, of course, does not include the millions of black lives that perished under the Atlantic in the cause of transportation, otherwise known as the Middle Passage. Admittedly, this summary is insufficient to capture the cruelty, violence and trauma experienced by the victims of the European slave trade. Nonetheless, 
it attempts to paint a picture. This was a three-way interaction. Europe, equipped with voyages, transported slaves from the coast of Africa in exchange for goods from the Americas. Imagine thousands of humans, shackled one to the other, kept in the basement of vessels with the air supply cut short due to the sardine-like arrangement. Stripped of their clothes, dignity and worth, with nothing but their tough black skin to endure the cold, heat and every other harsh conditions, women were exposed to various forms of sexual abuse by the crewmen on the ship. Sanitation and medical care were non-existent on the voyage, hence the breakouts of diseases which killed many of the slaves on board. It was nothing less than a miracle that the slaves survived the Atlantic. But was surviving truly a gift? The surviving Africans were immediately tossed into slavery and subdued into forced labor on the fields of their new owners. At this juncture, it is important to point out that many Africans aboard the ship recognized this dilemma, to die on the sea or to live as a slave. Some, understandably like the enslaved Africans of the 1803 Igbo landing, picked the former, adding another way to the already existing 100 ways to die in the middle passage. Could there be anything worse than this? Perhaps not, but the brutality of the trans-Saharan slave trade is worth telling too. <music> Owing to the Sahara, which spread itself confidently between the regions of North and West Africa, commuting was difficult. Although routes were carved out to ease this difficulty, the Arab caravans driven by camels were the central innovative piece to the effectiveness of the journeys. Still, the traveling conditions were so harsh that camels did not survive some of these journeys. As expected of Asian civilizations, trading was a man-to-man -man business. Hence, traders had to accompany their caravans. This probably contributed to its quota to the rise in slavery as more manpower was needed for trading. Enslaved Africans who survived the journey became slaves to the Arabs in the northern regions. Surprisingly, unlike the European traders, the Arab traders bought more women than men, making the gender ratio estimated to be two to one. Male slaves were castrated, some dying from the brutal process while the servile women were sexually exploited and made into multiple harems for their new owners. In contrast to the transatlantic slave trade that primarily sought agile male slaves for forced labor, it seems the Arabs' main aim was getting women slaves for recreation and expansion. Sadly, the children born of such relations were not free from the consequences of slavery, as they suffered discrimination in Arab society. There are no sources for accurate figures of the total number of people enslaved during the Trans-Saharan or Arab slave trade, but it is commonly estimated that over 7 million slaves were transported across the Sahara in the first few centuries of the trade. Some figures put it at 18 million. While historians dispute whether the number should be greater, certainly all agree that they cannot be lesser than that of the transatlantic slave trade, since the Arab slave trade which started around the year 650 lasted till the 1990s. This proves that the trans-Saharan slave trade is not just the first major slave trade in Africa, but it is also the longest. Although there are differences in the execution of the Arab transatlantic and European trans-Saharan slave trades, it remains undebatable that both events are brutal crimes committed against humanity. Even more, both series of violent acts left an indelible mark on black societies and decadence in the world as a whole. <laughs>
As it appears, the trans-Saharan slave trade did have some positive impact on sub-Saharan Africa. This is likely due to the mutual nature of the trades in their early days. The trades required carving out routes in the Sahara which added to the development of, as well as improving relations between the different regions separated by the vast desert. Unlike the era of the transatlantic trade, which crippled the development of West Africa, the Arab trade contributed wealth, witnessing the rise of great West African empires like the Mali Empire and the Shanghai, amongst others. Furthermore, the cultural exchange between the regions led to the introduction of the Islamic religion of the North to the West along with literacy. However, it was a coin with two sides. The massive buying of women slaves from the sub-Saharan African states caused a disproportion in the gender population, bringing down the reproduction rate of West Africa, while the Arabian population grew in numbers. The children born by enslaved women used as baby machines significantly increased the population of North Africa. However, marginalization and classism, a distant relative of racism, were the natural consequences of such mixed breeding. Additionally, the thriving slave market in North Africa was at times a supply for European traders. The latter soon decided they no longer needed the Arabian middlemen. With Portugal being the first European region to successfully get to the West African coast, the transatlantic slave trade era was ushered in. It is important to note that when the European slave trade started, the Arab slave trade was in decline, yet it existed, making Africa victim to simultaneous poaching by both the Arabs and Europeans until the 19th century. Similar to the trans-Saharan slave trade, the transatlantic slave trade also affected the African population even more greater than the former. With the majority of the enslaved being males, Africa lost a huge part of its potential population, leaving a crippled portion of its workforce. In this light, it is not a stretch to attribute the economic underdevelopment of the sub-Sahara to the transatlantic slave trade. Not only this, but the request for accountability may be the right thing for the victims. Brushing aside some underlying issues, the most long-lasting impact of the European slave trade is, perhaps, racism. It is uncertain whether all European traders who came to the West African coast did so with the mentality of racial hierarchy. Nonetheless, Racism is undoubtedly an aftermath of slavery and the slave trade. Whether to ease their conscience or just out of sheer twisted pride, it seems the Europeans adopted the idea of black people being an inferior race sometime during the years of the slave trade. Yet, it is not surprising. If black people were indeed a lesser race, it would become acceptable that they should be subject to the similarly higher races. It certainly leaves a bad taste in the mouth, but such a convenient rationale is one to be expected of a group of people seeking to justify an inhuman act by any means possible. This was only the start of what has transitioned and still exists as the oppression of black people in Europe, the Americas and other places in the world continues. For 400 years, black slaves worked on the farmlands of their owners building their economy, while the economy of Africa plunged lower. Although the British and United States governments abolished the transatlantic slave trade in the early 1800s, slavery continued until the mid-1800s. Despite the abolition, the African continent had been changed beyond quick repair, and today, more than a century later, 
Some African societies are still nursing the old scars caused by the long years of slavery. Both of the Arab trans-Saharan slave trade and the European transatlantic slave trade. In summary, here are 10 major differences between the Arab and European slave trades. 1. The Arab slave trade was prevalent in the Middle East, North Africa and parts of Asia, while the European slave trade was more directly associated with the transatlantic slave trade involving the Americas and the Caribbean. 2. While the Arab slave trade saw the enslavement of about 18 million Africans, an estimated 13 million Africans were carted away by the Europeans. 3. The Arabs captured their slaves exclusively from East Africa and favored the females over males at a ratio nearing 3 to 1, while the Europeans traded their slaves mainly from West and Central Africa and favored the men over the women at a ratio of 2 to 1. 4. In some cases, there were legal frameworks governing slavery in Arab societies with regulations regarding the treatment of slaves, while the Europeans developed legal systems that explicitly defined the status of slaves and justified their enslavement. 5. While the Arabs were more interested in and captured more women and girls to serve as sex slaves in their harems, European slave traders were interested in strongly built young men to serve as laborers on their plantations. 6. Children of an Arab master and a female slave were born free because of their father's Islamic heritage, while children of a European master and a female slave were born as slaves, as in the case of President Thomas Jefferson of the United States and his 14-year-old slave, Sally Hemings. 7. Enslaved Africans were often transported overland on foot, under brutal conditions by the Arabs, while the Europeans made use of the infamous Middle Passage, which involved the transportation of enslaved Africans across the Atlantic Ocean under brutal conditions as well. 8. The abolition of slavery in Arab societies occurred more gradually and was less driven by organized movements while abolition movements in Europe and the Americas gained momentum in the 18th and 19th centuries, ultimately leading to the end of the transatlantic slave trade. 9. Arab slavery has a longer historical continuity, with instances dating back to the years 650, while the European transatlantic slave trade had a relatively shorter but intense duration, spanning from the 16th to the 19th centuries. 10. The Arabs were brutal in their treatment of enslaved Africans as they were castrated and could not procreate, while the Europeans allowed their slaves to procreate and have families which they would most times sell off to keep the slavery economy machine grinding. Truly, many continents and regions of the world have experienced one form of slavery or the other, and it is very evident that Africa is one of the biggest victims of some of the world's most horrifying slave trade practices. An ignorant mind may take this as a chance to kickstart the oppression Olympics, but what historically informed mind would deny that Africa, sadly yet not shocking, ranks high. And more importantly, how ridiculous is it to start a competition for the most enslaved continent? Without exaggeration, if the long-term history of black slavery is considered, one would conclude that Africa's most worn pieces are the iron shackles and chains. Ironically, the jury didn't adorn the hands, feet, and necks of black people. Rather, it's bound the future of individuals and an entire continent. And while the chains are gone, 
The marks prove they once existed.